What's going on everybody? My name is Michael Weir and yeah, I'm in a hotel room right now, but you record when you are inspired. It's something I've learned for YouTube videos. I watched Halloween Ends when it came out Friday night, had a bunch of people over to my house. It was a really fun time watching it with those people. And then afterwards, I just wasn't feeling the review. And then Saturday and Sunday happened and I just wasn't feeling the review. And now I'm in a hotel room for work, but I was, I was sleeping. I woke up like, I want to talk about Halloween Ends. It was weird. But it's how I woke up. And so here we are, we're talking about Halloween ends. Let's do the review. Why? Maybe the only way he can die is if I die too. It all ends now. And so guys, Halloween Ends is directed by David Gordon Green. He directed the last two movies in this franchise as well. And the movie's called Halloween Ends, so you get this feeling that it's finally coming to a close. And based on all of the marketing of this movie, that's what it looked like we were going to get. Since this movie's called Halloween Ends and all of the marketing for this movie and the trailers for this movie made it look like it was the final Michael Myers versus Laurie Strode showdown, I was really excited for this movie because I've been a big fan of this franchise or this rebooted timeline, I should say. In 2018, they came back with Halloween Halloween 2018 and it was fantastic. I loved it. In fact, since I first watched and reviewed that movie, it has become my favorite in the Halloween franchise. I still really like Halloween 78, but it's a classic and 18 is like an updated version of that movie and I just prefer it more. Then Halloween Kills came out last year and it's supposed to take place on the exact same night as Halloween 2018. And the killing part of that movie, and the movie's called Halloween Kills, so I'll give it that, but the killing part of that movie is the best part of that movie. Anytime Michael Myers is just on a rampage, he's just killing so many people throughout Haddonfield, and it's fantastic. I love that aspect of the movie. The rest of the movie is kind of boring to me. You got Jamie Lee Curtis just stuck in a hospital for the whole movie and just kind of talking about, well, evil this, and Michael Myers is transcending, and it's just... It didn't work for me in that regard, but I did like the town of Haddonfield sort of coming together as a mob, and I liked Michael Myers in that movie. Moving forward to this movie, like I said, it's Halloween Ends, it's the final showdown, and that's kind of what we got. But let's get into the synopsis and then I'll get my likes and dislikes. Four years after her last encounter with the masked killer Michael Myers, Laurie Strode is living with her granddaughter and trying to finish her memoir. Myers hasn't been seen since, and Laurie finally decides to liberate herself from rage and fear and embrace life. However, when a young man stands accused of murdering a boy that he was babysitting, it ignites a cascade of violence and terror that forces Laurie to confront the evil she can't control. Everything that guy just says is bullshit. Okay, so maybe not everything that guy just said was bullshit, but a lot of it, and it felt like a good place to use that clip. And I've wanted to use that clip for a while in a video, so there you go. But Lori Strode is living with her granddaughter, she is writing her memoir, but it, the whole thing about an accused babysitter igniting, it, it doesn't really ignite. See, the thing happens at the beginning of the movie, they show the events of Halloween 2018, and then it jumps to Halloween 2019 when Myers is missing, and this murder happens. But you, the viewer, see this murder happen, and you, you kind of understand what happened. Yes, very sad. Anyway, it yes, it felt like a good place to use that clip as well that I've been wanting to use for a while. Okay, moving on. So then the movie flash forwards to 2022. So now it's been four years since 2018's Halloween Reign of Terror and Michael Myers is missing and hasn't been seen, which is really weird because the Michael Myers they reintroduced to us back in 2018 doesn't seem like he'd take a day off. It just doesn't seem like it. Like he is on a rampage to kill and he's not going to be stopped. I got to get out of here. I think I'm going to lose it. Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> In fact, at the end of Halloween Kills, you had an angry mob go after him and he kills everybody and then still goes and commits another murder at the end of that movie. So it really seems like he's a force that's not going to be stopped. So you're telling me this Michael Myers was just like, all right, that's enough for now. I'll be back, maybe. We'll see. Like, that's, like, what? Like, that's a weird concept to me, but okay. So you get into this movie and you get Laurie Strode just sort of trying to live her life, but she's not really liked by the townspeople because they see a connection between her and Michael Myers. And then you got this Corey character and he's not liked by the townspeople because, well, he did commit a murder and seemingly went free for it because it was an accident, but you know, still, he killed a kid. And then you've got the townspeople who are basically a character in this movie, and I do like that, but you got the townspeople 
Towns people who are just kind of still dealing with the events from 2018. And then you've got Allison who's trying to live her life as a nurse and help people out. You can tell she's still dealing with the events from 2018. And finally, you've got Michael Myers who's been living under a bridge for four years. That's your setup for this movie. And really, all I can give you for this movie because if I give you more I will spoil it and I don't want to spoil this movie for you it's on Peacock you can go watch it right now and or you can go to the theater if that's what you want to do I personally chose to watch it at home first of all you can have an audience but also at home you don't get those movie theater crowds that are the worst during horror movies so I did see this at home. Getting into my likes and dislikes for this movie, guys, has been difficult because this is where I struggled with my review the other day. I, I wasn't sure what I liked. I knew what I disliked, but I wasn't sure what I liked. But I know now what I liked was anything that involved Michael Myers killing people because that's what makes a good Halloween movie to me. Not to say that I'm not a fan of Halloween Season of the Witch. I am. I own the 4K Steelbook. I love it. But ultimately, Halloween Season of the Witch is not a Halloween movie to me. And I've seen a lot of people online talking about, well, you don't like Halloween, you like Michael Myers. Well, the Halloween movies are synonymous with Michael Myers and Michael Myers killing people. So anytime Michael Myers is killing people in this movie, I had a really good time with it. But anytime he's not, just like Halloween Kills, is where the story starts to trip itself up in my opinion and it just gets a little convoluted. Which leads me to my dislikes unfortunately. I don't like any of the characters in this movie including Laurie Strode. I don't feel like they're the same people I just watched in the last two movies. And yes this movie takes place four years later so people change, people grow, I understand that. But just in the progression of these movies it is just weird that Laurie Strode is now such this radically different person who's flipping off the camera talking about tits like it's just weird. I really dislike the character of Allison in this movie too and it's weird because I really liked her in the previous movies but again in this movie they didn't know what to do with her character and so they were like okay you're just gonna have this love storyline with Corey so that we can push you two together and that way when Corey and Allison are together it'll involve Jamie Lee Curtis's character of Laurie Strode and then Michael Myers will be there and that's how we'll force them together because these movies have done their best their absolute best to prove to us that Michael Myers and Laurie Strode do not have a connection even though they definitely have a connection and, and so they they force this love story between Allison and Corey and it just it feels forced because they meet in this movie and then they're in love in this movie and then they want to run away in this movie like immediately and it's not like a lot of time passes in this movie it's just over the course of a couple of days they're like yeah we should run away together and it's like it feels forced the character of Corey in this movie is quite possibly my least favorite character and that's not to say that I don't like this character if it was built in another movie and what I mean by that is I like the events of Season of the Witch but if you took the events of Season of the Witch and just placed them in the middle or the end for that matter of any of these Halloween timelines it just doesn't fit that's why usually with Season of the Witch we go well that's its own timeline because it even shows the original 1978 Halloween movie on TV so we get it it's its own timeline but this this Corey character this Corey storyline while I don't mind it, and I think there's some interesting things with it between him and Michael Myers that I won't spoil, but while I think there's some interesting things that they do, I have a problem with the fact that they were like, hmm, you know we've been building up all these other characters in this Michael Myers versus Laurie Strode storyline? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, let's, let's make that the background, and we're going to make this Corey character the front and center. And it doesn't really make sense. Now I'm going to throw a spoiler tag up there because I, I cannot go into my final dislike of this movie without going into the spoilers. So the spoiler tag is up there. Just letting you know right now. Okay, so Corey possesses some of the powers of Michael Myers that even Michael Myers doesn't possess in this movie, which is weird, but fine. You've got Corey going around with the Michael Myers mask, killing people, and it just seems disrespectful to the character of Michael Myers in his final movie. You know, like you've got Michael Myers as the sidekick in his final movie. You have Michael Myers as the uh, 1B character in his final movie. It doesn't make sense. And then when it comes down to it, you have Laurie Strode versus Corey. If you told me that before I watched this movie, I'd say, you're crazy. They wouldn't do that. They would make it Laurie Strode versus Michael Myers. But no, it's, it's Laurie Strode versus Corey. And then, oh, when she finally beats him... It's Michael Myers. And then there's just the whole concept of that character possessing some of Michael Myers' powers, the undead powers. 
because Michael Myers in this movie, and the spoiler tag is still there, so you are warned, because the character of Michael Myers in this movie is killed definitively and then ground up. And you see like pieces of his head smash up. So like he is dead, but he just gave some powers to Corey that like wouldn't allow that. And it's like, they didn't know how to end this thing. They're like, well, Laurie Strode has to come out on top. Why? Why did Laurie Strode have to come out on top? Like that, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's my personal opinion. I'm gonna take the spoiler tag down. Those are my feelings. I didn't hate this movie. I don't know if I can say that I really liked this movie. It's, it's not a bad entry into the Halloween franchise, but they took a chance, they took a swing, and in my opinion, most of the things they took a chance with in this movie were a big miss. For me personally, because because they were at the end of this trilogy. If they had introduced this Corey concept into the middle of the franchise, and by the end of the franchise we understood that concept, that would be something. The fact that they tagged it on to the end because I feel like they didn't know what else to do, for me, it just didn't work. But guys, those are my opinions, those are my thoughts, and that's my review on Halloween Ends. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the share button if you want your friends to see it. If you've seen Halloween Ends, and remember, you can see this on Peacock, you don't have to go to a theater, or you can go to the theater if you want. But if you have seen this movie and you've got thoughts and comments, we'll put those in the comment section down below because I would love to know your thoughts. Again, I'm not hating on this movie, it just didn't work for me. The the new concepts didn't work for me. All the stuff with Michael Myers and Laurie Strode toward the end, it kind of worked. But then I think they went off the rails again at the end because they just kind of, they said, oh yeah, he he transcends, uh, but not in this movie. He, he doesn't transcend. It's, uh, he transcends in the other movie, but not in this movie. All right, guys, those are my thoughts. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh, final thoughts. First of all, I bring too many shoes with on my work trips. But um, Halloween, I hope that it's really not the end. Like, I hope we get more in the future. For what it's worth. I don't want to wait 10 years for another Halloween movie. Even if we get something like this where I don't love it or hate it, fine. Just, I don't want to wait 10 years to hear that theme song again, I guess.